Hello. I should be live. And I'm seeing some folks already in the chat. Hello, and thank you for being here. I'm so excited to actually have some folks show up for the live event. It always makes it a zillion times more fun for me. Um, if at any point there are any technical problems, please let me know. It might be something I can fix. <laughs> you know, like if there's distortion on the audio, which has occasionally occurred, that sort of thing. Um, so welcome. And yes, I see someone in the chat was asking about Zoom. There is no Zoom. This is it. You're not visible to anybody. <laughs> Most folks say they appreciate that, that they can make all the noise they want and nobody can see or hear them during these workshops. So, howdy. Greetings from East Nashville. Uh, we're going to work on the tune Gone to the Free State today. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that. So I'm just going to tell you what the shape of this thing is going to be. I'll play the tune. Well, first I'll tell you a little bit, a little bit of background about the tune. Then I'll play the tune at a moderate pace for a little bit, and then I'll play a little slower. Um, then I'll go through and break down the tune slowly in chunks so that you can get a handle on it. Then we'll kind of try to put it back together, and I'll talk about some of the things that make this a fiddle tune as opposed to just a pile of notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then after we're done with working on this tune, there will be just general Q&A time. So if you have questions about the specific things that I'm teaching in the moment, like could you repeat the first part of the A part or whatever, feel free to just chime in in the moment in the chat window and let me know. But if you have more general kind of questions about fiddling or uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> Save that for the Q&A part of the situation, which will be later. Um, I think that's kind of the shape of things. And I usually do ticketed workshops where the link is a, a private thing and you can only get access to it if you buy a ticket through my uh, ticketing platform. And today I thought it would be fun to just do a free wide open thing so people could tune in if they want to and don't have to have a ticket. And tipping is how you can pay or you can still buy a ticket through my Ko-fi page and um, either a ticket or you can tip on, on the Ko-fi page. Or if you just want to shoot a tip via Venmo or PayPal, I've put that information up here. Let me see, am I pointing to the right place? I think up there. Um, and I did a fun thing here, which is down here somewhere. There's uh, this graphic about tipping me at Kofi. And if you tip me during this broadcast, your name will show up. Something will pop up. I haven't tested it yet, but. It's supposed to work. So we'll see if that works. So that's just me saying, throw me money if any of this is of value to you. Okay, onward and upward. Let me see what's going on in the chat window. Hi, Matt. Is that Paul Brown? I can't believe Paul Brown is out there watching this right now. I wish we were hanging out, Paul. Okay. So the background on this tune, I'm actually not like a huge John Ashby geek, like a lot of my friends are. <laughs> um, but I was listening to some of his stuff recently and just thought this was a really fun tune and a very sort of straightforward, fiddly kind of tune and a slightly different flavor than some of the things that I've taught in my workshops. So I thought it would be a fun one. Uh, and so I, I did look up a little bit of information because I knew stuff from other people talking about him, but I wasn't totally solid on the facts. So everything I'm sharing with you is not like I'm some brilliant researcher. I just read the information at the Field Recorders Collective website about John Ashby. 
he was a fiddler from Northern Virginia. And the Free State, his band was the Free State Ramblers. And this tune has gone to the Free State. The Free State they're referring to, this is like the fun John Ashby trivia. The Free State was a 12 square mile chunk of land in Northern Virginia that declared itself an independent country, like not part of the US and they had a king. <laughs> and this was in the 1800s. And it went on for 25 years before they lost in court their right to exist as a separate country inside of the United States. And they didn't pay taxes and they didn't, apparently they weren't into sending their kids to school and all kinds of stuff. So that's the free state that is being referred to in the title of this tune. So anyway, kind of a fun thing. Uh, this tune is in cross A. If you haven't tuned to cross A yet, go ahead and do that. I want you to be playing along with me. And uh, so I'll just go ahead and play the tune at a moderate tempo a couple times through so you can just make sure you have it all in your head. And then we'll get into the details. going to talk to you about bow direction at any point <laughs> related to this tune. The, the shape of this tune to me is pretty wide open as far as bowing. There are a lot of notes. It's like a whole series of notes and you could theoretically pretty much play them all in separate bow strokes if you wanted to. And you can add slurs where it's comfortable for you to add slurs. For me, in thinking about how I wanted to sort of break this tune down for you guys, um, I realized that when I'm playing it, I'm, I'm changing the bowing a lot. Uh, 
So, and it depends on what tempo I'm playing it at. If it's slower, then maybe I'm doing more separate bows. And if I'm doing it faster, then I'm putting more slurs in. Um, I don't really want you to think too hard about what's, like, what direction your bow is going in. <laughs> Ultimately, the important thing is how does it feel? And how are you expressing the rhythmic feel? So, um... First of all, let's just get a handle on the notes and then we'll see what's happening with the right hand. And I can talk about some of the things that I think are important about right hand attack on the strings, but I actually think the direction that your bow is going in on this one is not, um, it's just, it's not the priority. That's, that's my theory anyway. Okay, so let's take it in chunks. It's hard to break this one up because it's all sort of tied together. But uh, let's say that's a chunk. And I'll do separate bows since we're doing it really slowly right now. Again, slightly slower. And then the next chunk. first chunk. Again. Oh, sorry. Putting those two together. Now I want to warn you, <laughs> breaking down a tune like this makes it all just fall apart. So I'm going to keep going back to playing it up to tempo to keep it in your ear in the right way so that you understand how the notes actually fit together. They don't all receive the same weight and they don't all, they aren't all the same length. So that's more what it's like, but we're doing it super slow. And so everything sounds very square and even. It's not how it actually is. I just want you to know what the notes are. <laughs> so that chunk again, slow and clunky. And more up to speed. to do a funny bowing there. Um, so the next chunk. Yeah. that's not how I actually bow it at all. 
<laughs> but I'm going to play that slow again just so you get the notes. So if we put those chunks together, we have I'm going to do that slowly, just like I just did, hopefully. Now again, that's not how it actually goes. Those are just the notes. So let's do that a little bit steppier and more like how the tune goes. So at the end there's a uh, uh, or you can also go, you can add in that first finger. I believe John Ashby does that sometimes on the recording. Um, this, by the way, is not a completely accurate representation of how John Ashby does it. This is just the way I've ended up playing it. And then I revisited to make sure that I was somewhat close. <laughs> so one more time on this chunk. Next bit is same as the first bit, and then so that last chunk I'll go through slowly. I think he does a little bit of a slide there. I might be exaggerating it some, but. So the second finger on the A string is where we're starting. to bow it. So if we put all of those little chunks together, I'll play it very slowly, and I hope you're playing along. So, if you want to add in another note, I do it sometimes and other times I don't. <laughs> but that you can put that first finger in there at the end of that phrase too. So let's play through that whole thing a couple of times at about that speed.
So is that making sense? I hope so. I'm going to have a sip of tea. Cheers. Hope you're having some sort of beverage also. Okay. So once again, I'm just going to keep reiterating. <laughs> when I slow these tunes down and try to show you the notes, it's just a totally normal thing for all the notes to kind of take on the same weight and dynamic. And just keep in mind that's only to get a handle on where the notes are. <laughs> it's not actually how the tune goes as far as how it feels and how the, each of those notes is treated. So just keep that in mind. So, um, uh, so we just ended the A part. And this is a, a normal length tune, two A's, two B's. So let's pretend we just ended the second A. We'll be going into the B part. That's gonna be the first chunk of the B part. I'm gonna do that even slower. One more time. And then the next chunk. So I'll do that a little bit slower. Again. So if we put those two chunks together, we have Let's do that again. And the next chunk is So the new bit is the last, so that, and that last phrase, um, I'll do that a little slower. So if we put all of those together, that's the B part. So let's do that, but a little bit slower than I just did it.
Okay, we now have all of the sort of skeleton of this tune to work with. And if you're thinking that doesn't sound anything like the video you posted or the recording of John Ashby, <laughs> don't worry. We haven't really turned it into a fiddle tune yet. These are just notes. So um, I will go through and, and try to point out some of the things that I'm at least aware of in my own playing of the tune that are different than the skeleton that I've shown you, but we'll get to that in a little bit. If you have any questions about, like, if I'm, if I missed something or I didn't do enough repetition of a specific chunk, let me know in the chat window. Um, otherwise, uh, I think before we start just kind of playing the tune, the main thing to know is, uh, You gotta have a sense of where you wanna feel the beat. <laughs> and that can be a pretty playful thing. People always talk about the, the right hand in old time fiddle and for good reason, because it's what makes it distinctive. And I feel like, you know, I've, I've done a lot of talking about sort of more complicated, I feel like, Boeing source recordings on these workshops. And this one, like I said, I feel like there are a lot of different ways to bow this tune. And stylistically, I feel like this is pretty different than the way that, um, like John Ashby's fiddling, I feel like is pretty different from the way that I play the fiddle um, for the most part. It's a little, I feel like it's a little straighter and and can be like this tune like i was saying could you could play the entire thing like all separate bow strokes if you wanted to and to me this is such a good illustration of the breadth of what is old time fiddling because you hear him playing a tune and it's clearly old time fiddle music and you hear uncle bunt stevens playing a tune super different way of bowing also clearly old time fiddle music <laughs> And what is that? It's the, it's the drive and it's the feel, it's the attack on the string with the bow. And um, I don't know if you use the amazing slow downer, <laughs> which I love to use and I think is an amazing learning tool for people who are trying to figure out how to play old time fiddle music. You can hear, if you put this tune into the amazing slow downer, you will hear these sort of subtle dynamic things going on in how he is, how he's phrasing the tune. And something that I like to point out is that there, in old time fiddling, I really believe there's no such thing as a static bow stroke. <laughs> like every single time you move the bow, there's some kind of dynamic thing happening. You're digging in, you're releasing, you're pulsing, you're, there's like a whoom thing that happens. And your placement of that sort of dynamic crescendo, if we're going down into the micro level, is what gives it a pulse and a rhythmic drive. So that's a lot of words about something that ultimately comes from feel. And I feel like I need to say all of that so that you don't lose sight of the fact that this pile of notes needs to feel like something when you get to the end of putting them together and figuring out how to play them. <laughs> so ultimately we want to be able to play this tune in a way that's going to make somebody want to dance. And I think everybody's going to have their own way of getting to that but I don't want you to lose sight of it. Okay, I think that's enough preaching. So now I'm just gonna play the tune. And as I'm going through, I'll play it through a couple times right now for you to play along at a nice moderate tempo. And as I'm doing that, 
the way this works is I usually notice some things that I want to talk about and then I'll talk about those things. If you notice some things that you don't understand or that you want more explanation of, put it in the chat window. Let's see, ready, here we go. One of the things that I was thinking about while I was doing that was what I was just talking about with the sort of the idea of not all of these notes are getting the same weight. And, um, and if I'm playing it more up to speed, there's a, when I was teaching the notes, That second E note is basically not there. <laughs> it's sort of a subliminal note. It's, there's a space in there and it's kind of filled by another bow stroke on that string, I think. Um, when I first started playing this, I thought it was. Cause I was hearing something, like there was some way that I was hearing him getting to this note and I couldn't quite figure it out. And when I put it in the slow downer is sort of like, I guess it's, he's hitting that open E, but kind of barely, it's almost like there's a little breath in the phrase there. So see what I mean? It's sort of like, 
don't know. It's there, but it's not there. It barely has any weight. Like, there's, we're not giving it any emphasis at all, and there's barely even a bow stroke. So that sort of thing is exactly what I'm talking about, where, like, just because a note is there doesn't mean you go, here's a note. <laughs> like, some of these things just are getting you someplace else. And, and if you listen, let me see if I can do it more slowly. Um, you hear the way there's like a, like there's a, there's a sense of here's the beat. And when I'm, when I'm on, when I'm trying to emphasize that beat, there's an emphasis with the uh, sort of speed and pressure of the bow. I don't want to, I don't want you to think about this. <laughs> I want you to just sort of have this somewhere in your subconscious that's like the ultimate goal is that this does not just sound like a string of notes, that it sounds like a tune that makes you want to dance. And those dynamics are what makes it happen. Illustration. Of course, beginnings and endings of phrases are where this is going to be the most obvious. Um, so I'm exaggerating it there so you can hear it, but there is this sense of like pressure and release going on. And it's within each bow stroke, and then it's also within the phrases. Maybe that's getting too off in the weeds. Um, so, something to think about. <laughs> as far as details, uh, for something I feel like that often comes up in these workshops is the, the stuff that goes by really quickly and um, that can be hard to interpret on a recording or a video. So like, for instance, um, John Ashby's version. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what he does. And I've, I put a little ornament in there. which might sound fancy, but it's really just... It's that, but fast. And maybe he does that somewhere on the recording also, and that's why it's in my head, or maybe I picked it up from someone else, like Sammy Lind, I don't know. Got a question here about how I'm adding and removing pressure on the bow. And you are correct, I am using my index finger. That's how it works for me. Um, this is the, the mechanics of how I'm applying pressure to the bow is, I've got my thumb here. Ignore the fact that I choke up on the bow, that's, that's a whole other issue. And my first finger is making contact with the stick right behind this knuckle here. Um, and so those are the two points of contact that are controlling the pressure of the bow. So basically it's this tiny little motion here, like sort of this, that is creating pressure on the string. And so it's, 
that that way of interacting with the bow is something that I often recommend if someone's struggling with their bow hold um, because it's so efficient as a way of digging into the string. You're not pressing down on the bow. You're not using your hand or your arm. It's just this tiny little motion. And, and it gives you a lot of control over that thing that I was talking about, the idea of dynamics within each bow stroke. So, um, yeah, that's, that is how I'm doing that. Um, another thing that I do, I think, differently than John Ashby is I just love drone strings. <laughs> I love a drone. And while you do hear open strings um, and, and some double stop noises on his recording, there, he has he spends a lot more time playing single strings than I do. I'm just like, if I can add a drone, I'm going to add a drone. <laughs> so, so that's another sort of sonic difference in the way that I'm playing the tune. So I'm just going to play the tune. I'm going to try to not think about the fact that you're watching me. And I'm going to play the tune at a moderate tempo the way that I think I play it. I'm sure I'm going to be thinking too hard, but... I'm hoping you're playing along with me. Ready, here we go. point out I tend to do at the very end of the B phrase that first finger I do that a little flat it's sort of a little little under the note in between note um, questions comments observations you want to just keep playing the tune are we done? I mean, that's I spent a lot of time on it. I don't know. Maybe it's just homework for you now. You go off and try to turn it into a fiddle tune that people want to dance to. So how about we have Q&A time, and then after that we can come back and play the tune a couple more times. Questions? I guess while I'm waiting for the window to catch up with what I know is a little bit of a delay. I will once again point you toward the options for tipping me. It should be somewhere down here, down here. Um, 
And uh, I will also say I have openings for fiddle lessons, AKA one-on-one -on -one fiddle coaching. Uh, from now through the end of May, I have some availability depending on the week. Um, and my whole teaching philosophy is just to help you figure out how to learn on your own. So asking to have a lesson with me does not mean you're committing to having lessons with me every week. Just check in. If you want to have a check in, let me help you solve fiddle puzzles in your life. <laughs> it's something I love to do. I love to help people figure out what's going on and then go off and learn on their own. Um, so I guess that's my main sales pitch other than tipping me. And uh, I have various things for sale. It's not too hard to find those things. Let's see if there's some questions. Paul Brown has a question. Can you explain a little how you move across the strings with definition, first phrase, second part? Oh, wow, that's a good detail. That is sort of a funny thing, isn't it? That sort of movement in a fiddle tune is often a place where people wind up uh, kind of mumbling through the phrase because those string crossings can get messy pretty quickly. So how do I do that? question, Paul Brown, because um, I never would have homed in on this if you hadn't asked about it. I think part of the way that I'm achieving definition in that phrase is that even though I do have some slurs in here, I'm, I'm breaking up the, um, the slurring right at the string crossing. See? learn new things every day. So <laughs> like I'm hitting those as I'm crossing the strings, I'm hitting the, the higher string with an up bow stroke. So so there's a there's sort of a new bow stroke starting on that string, if that makes sense. Um, so I, I think that would be part of how I'm making sure that it's clear that everything remains defined. Um, yeah, so you're saying you find that tricky. Um, so I know I said I wasn't going to show any specific bowings. And of course, the thing is, everybody, I know Paul Brown and I know how he plays the fiddle. And when he and I sit down and play together, generally our bows are going in opposite directions. So I, I don't really want to tell Paul which way to bow because I know that his intuition is perfect as it is. And I don't want to try to make him do something that's counterintuitive. But in your own special Paul Brown way, it does seem like that uh, sort of just breaking the whatever the slurring phrase is at the string crossing seems to be working for me. Um, <laughs> So if I was Paul Brown, it would probably be. Maybe. <laughs> but the idea of being like chunking out the bowing so that when you're making the movement to the next string over, there's a, a defined like 
attack. Does that make sense? Um, how do you control the bow going across those arm wrist? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Yeah, the whole it does the whole arm is sort of as I'm making that string crossing it it looks like my whole arm is just going down slightly like everything's still kind of in the same position it just goes oh this is so good Paul you're making me think about stuff I never think about when I'm doing these workshops I love it it's so sweet um was that helpful? I hope that's I hope that's useful information. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Go figure it out. Go figure it out. Anyone else have questions? Um. I guess I can also put in a sales pitch here for um, the, so over here at my, my Ko-fi page, that's the platform that I use for ticketing for all of my workshops. And so if you want access to older workshops, this is the place to go. Um, I do have, I don't have like everything, but I have a, an archive of a handful of prior broadcasts and you can still buy a ticket and get access to those it's just you'll see the live feed uh oh good i'm glad that was helpful all right well i'm not seeing any other questions in the window oh good i'm i'm glad that was useful for you too rose uh since no other questions are bubbling up Let's play the tune a couple more times. So at the moderate tempo, and then we can speed it up a little bit. Ready, here we go.
Hope you're having fun out there playing the tune, getting to know it. Remember, these things take time. You have to like hang out with the tune and listen a whole bunch to John Ashby and then hang out with the tune some more. Um, but it's a fun one, very energetic, good, happy dance tune and very accessible, I think, for jam sessions. And so have fun. And uh, I guess since no more questions came up, I don't think. Hi, Dick Kinnett. Uh, yeah, um, so I think I can wrap up here. So once again, if you've gotten any value out of this, throw me a tip. One of these ways over here. If you're interested in um, other workshops, you can go to my Ko-fi page and see the archive that's available there. You can also access tune videos on my website, which is rainagellert.com or fiddlegeek.com if you don't know how to spell my name. And under the fiddle heading, there's something called tune videos. And if you haven't explored that yet, it's just a big old free archive of me playing by myself, playing fiddle tunes, sort of normal speed and then medium and then really slow. And I will be adding this tune to that archive of videos later today. And let me see, what else can I tell you? Hit me up if you want to have a little fiddle coaching session. And uh, please pay attention to what's going on in the Tennessee legislature. Our representative, Justin Jones, has been expelled and we're not happy about it. So fight the power and uh, keep in touch. Sign up for my newsletter. All right, y'all. Have a great weekend. Happy holidays if you are celebrating any of those and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care, everybody.